Welcome back everybody. In this video we're continuing with section 10.2 and the first thing we're going to do is another example of graphing a hyperbola as well as finding its vertices, foci, the length of the transverse axis and also asymptotes. So let's get started on the graph. Um, so this one says x squared over 16 minus y squared over 9 equals 1. So I'm going to start by drawing in where the vertices are first. So this one, x squared over 16, I want to think, okay, well, if x were equal to zero, so this is just kind of mental for a minute, if x is zero, that whole term's not there, right? So we'll have minus y squared over nine equals positive one. So that would mean that we would have complex number solutions to this. So it must be that x is not equal to zero, okay? So uh, that means so we have, Okay, um, x can't be equal to zero. So how about y equaling zero? Okay, if y were equal to zero, then that term would be gone. We'd have x squared over 16 equals one, which means x squared equals 16, so that x is plus or minus four. So that's going to give us our two vertices. When x is four, y is zero. When x is negative four, y is zero, okay? And then uh, we can put the uh, uh, asymptotes on next. So let's uh, do that. That will help us draw the uh, hyperbola itself. So taking a look at our equation again, we know that the equation of the asymptotes will y be y equals plus and minus mx, okay? And m will be the slope. The slope comes from the y change in the top. So take a look at the y term for our equation, y squared over nine. Square root of nine is three. So plus or minus three over. The x squared term is x squared over 16. The square root of 16 is four. So plus or minus three fourths x. Square root of the y number, that was nine. Square root of nine is three. Over the x number, square root of 16 is four. So three fourths and plus or minus. Okay, so let me go ahead and draw on those asymptotes. And uh, so starting at the origin, I will go up three and write four. Uh, and then starting at the origin, we can go down three and write four. Okay, and that will give us um, points on the asymptotes. So let's go ahead and draw in the asymptotes next. Without a different color. Okay. Let's do that again for the other one. Okay. All right. So that looks decent for the couple of asymptotes. So we have the equations of the asymptotes. Okay, and we've gone ahead and drawn those on the graph as well. Um, and then uh, let's go ahead and put down the graph of the uh, hyperbola itself. So we know where the vertices are. So from there, we could just kind of sketch them uh, kind of growing out towards their asymptotes. If you want this to be a little better looking, you can calculate and plot some points. Of course, if you want it to be really good looking, then you can just draw the whole thing on the computer. Um, but that will do right there. Okay, so the vertices were at four zero and negative four zero. Uh, foci we gotta get, length of transverse axis. So the length of the transverse axis, that's the uh, distance between the vertices. So here they go from the center out to four and negative four, which is a distance of four times two makes eight. So the length of the transverse axis is eight. We've got the asymptotes. So the only other piece that we needed to get was the foci. Okay, and we know that C squared is A squared plus B squared on a hyperbola. 
And so uh, that will be 16 plus 9, or 25. So C is equal to 5 for this. Remember that the foci are going to be on the same axis as the vertices are. So here that's the x-axis. So that means that the y is 0. So they will be at negative 5, 0 and 5, 0 for the two foci. OK, so we have all the pieces there uh, for our uh, ellipse, OK? That is our, our hyperbola. I said ellipse. It's supposed to be hyperbola. Sorry. All right, so next I wanted to show you how to draw some of this on the computer as well. So we're going to do the hyperbola that we just graphed. So that was x squared over 16. and then minus y squared over 9, and that's equal to 1. Okay, there's our hyperbola. And then we're going to go ahead and add in the asymptotes as well. So where is it going? Yeah, that's going kind of crazy on me. All right, and so let's go ahead and put on uh, the asymptotes as well. So they were uh, plus and minus 3 fourths x y equals 3 fourths x was one of them, and y equals negative 3 fourths x was the other one. All right, so there you can see the hyperbola along with uh, the graphs of the asymptotes. All right, moving on. In the next example, rather than starting with the equation of a hyperbola and trying to make its graph, we're starting out with some information about the hyperbola and we want to make up the equation for it. So in this case, we know what the foci are and what the vertices are. And so based on this, we're going to figure out the equation. So uh, a rough sketch of the hyperbola is going to be uh, possibly helpful. Here I know the vertices will be at 0 plus and minus 8. So it's going to be the kind that opens up and down and won't have any x-intercepts. Okay, and then the foci are in there someplace. Okay, good enough. So then we have to decide if it's going to be y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1, or is it the other way around? Is it x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1? So we got to think about which format there is going to give us y-intercepts and not x-intercepts. So taking a look at the first one, if we're not going to have any x-intercepts, that means that we have to have y not equaling 0, which means that if y were a 0, we would have uh, complex solutions. Taking a look at this first equation, if the y were 0, if the y were 0, then we would have minus x squared over b squared equals 1, which would mean that x would have to be complex if y were 0. So that's going to be the one that we're going to want. Let me just check and make sure that the other one doesn't make any sense for this problem. So in the second one, if y were 0, okay, if y were 0, then this term would be absent. We'd have x equaling plus or minus a. So uh, that would give us two x-intercepts, which is not consistent with the picture we have here. So it can't be the second one, okay? So it's not that one. It's going to be the one on the left, okay? All right, so that's that. So now we need to figure out uh, how to incorporate the information we have. So we know that the vertices are at 0 and plus or minus 8. So when x is 0, y should be plus or minus 8. So let me go ahead and put in... Uh, 0 for x, so we have y squared over a squared minus 0, right, is going to equal 1. So y squared equals a squared, okay? And so we needed to have our, our y be 8, right? And so y squared will be 64. So 64 will be our a squared, okay? So what we've got so far is y squared over 64 minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Knowing where the vertices are helped us figure out the denominator for the y squared term. Okay, now the only other piece of information we have is about the foci, that they're at 0 plus or minus 10. 
and we're going to use those to help us figure out the b squared. Remembering that for a hyperbola, c squared is a squared minus, no, plus b squared. For the equation, it was a minus. So for this thing with the c, the a, and the b, it's got to be a plus. So c squared, c is 10, so c squared is 100. Or our a squared is 64. And so from there, we can get that our b squared has to be 36. Okay, so putting that uh, all together, we're going to have y squared over 64 minus x squared over 36, and that's equal to 1. Okay, to kind of recap what it was that we did, um, we used the information that we started with to help us figure out which format of the equation was going to be. Was it going to be plus y squared or plus x squared? From there, we use the vertices to figure out one denominator, and then we use the fact about the foci to figure out the other denominator. In this example, we're again finding the equation for a hyperbola, but the information that we're given is different. This time, we're given the vertices and we're given the equations for the asymptotes. The last one, we had the vertices and the foci. This time, we have the vertices and the equations of the asymptotes. So where we'll start still is to figure out which format for the equation we're going to have. And so again, the vertices is going to help us figure that out. So um, for this one, we know that when x is 0, y should be plus or minus 6. So it's going to have y-intercepts, but no x-intercepts. So thinking it through a little bit, we should have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Okay, so let's kind of mentally try that out for a second. When x is 0, you want to picture kind of doing this. If x is 0, you cover up that first term. So, okay, if x is 0, y squared over a squared it would have to equal 1. And so that means that a squared has to be 36. Okay. So we have y squared over 36 minus x squared over b squared is going to equal 1. Okay, so then all we got to do is now is figure out the b squared and we'll be able to figure out what will be done. Okay, so that's where the asymptotes are going to come in. So we know the equations of the asymptotes are y equals plus or minus one third x. And so taking a look at the slope, the slope here is key, uh, one third. Okay, so that is the y change divided by the x change. So the ratio of the square roots of these two denominators has to be one third. What I mean by that is this, the y squared denominator is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. 6 over b, at the x squared term, its denominator is b squared, square root of that is just a b. So the y number over the x number has to equal one third. Okay, so six over b equals one over three. So that means that b has to be uh, six times as much as three. And so b has to be 18. Okay, so then if b is 18, b squared is 324, as it turns out. So that will be our b squared. So in the end, we'll have y squared over 36 minus x squared over b squared, and that's equal to 1. But wait, we figured out that b squared was 324. All right, so that takes us to the end of this example. We have just a couple more to do, but those will appear in the next video. In the meantime, let me know if you have any questions, and have a great day.